too. Congratulations. Okay. If you were raised by maybe your grandparents, or maybe your grandparent raising, or maybe you know a grandparent that's raising someone else's kids, raise your hand. It's a really huge chunk of the room. Awesome. So if you grew up um, maybe coming home and there was no food in the fridge, raise your hand. That's still a huge chunk of the room. Yep. If you grew up watching your parents make really, really bad financial decisions, raise your hand. A huge chunk of the room. Yep. If you guys kind of made some decisions now as an adult because you witnessed certain things as a child, you wanted to make sure that you didn't become the things that you saw when you were a kid, raise your hand. Very good. Um, if you have offspring, go ahead and raise your hand. <laughs> Populate the world here, guys. Um, let me think here. If, if you are a hairstylist, or were a hairstylist, raise your hand. Hi. School I went to actually closed, that's awkward. So anyways, okay, so that's kind of like my journey, honestly. I grew up with a single mom, I haven't seen my dad since I was seven, and that is an amen. He's a terrible person. Um, amen. A amen. Oh, actually, close your eyes. Let's do some more. If you guys, if you guys have been affected by cancer to yourself or your family, I don't know, I'm not a cancer guy, but I'm just saying in general, raise your hand. Okay, put it down. If you have been a victim of abuse of any sorts, raise your hand. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Me too. We homies. All this stuff. I get you. Okay. So you, I do not want a single one of you guys sitting here telling me, I can't do this because I've had this past and all these things happen to me. Guess what? I woke up today with a damn new day. It doesn't matter what happened yesterday. It doesn't matter if I ate peanut butter and jelly yesterday and I didn't today. You get a new day every single stinking day. Welcome to life, okay? So I grew up with my, my mom was a single mom. She made terrible decisions. She was super young. She was 18. Like, whatever. I mean, and I, when I got older, I wanted to make better decisions. Um, I went through high school. We struggled very, very bad. My friends were giving me their clothes, so I had clothes um, to wear. And most people, I don't, I don't even know, like if people really knew that I like went to high school with that. My life was like so crazy. Some people did. So witnessing everything that I saw, you know, I was like, I'm gonna be independent. I'm gonna rely on nobody. And at the weirdest moment, God put my boyfriend, who is now my husband, into my life, which changed everything. Um, I moved out when I was 18, had a full-time job, went to cosmetology school, worked two jobs while I was going to school, graduated school the day I turned 21, the next day I had a job, six months later I became a manager. Like, I was like, like kind of like the girls said up here, there's like a trend. You're like, you just, you, you're going. You're like, life or death, getting in there, doing your thing. Um, I thought I had made it. My husband, my boyfriend at the time, was working on um, construction, so he was making, you know, a good amount of money. Our money was still separate. He was like way better off than I was. Um, and I was like, okay. The first time in my life, I was like, oh my God, I can pay all my bills and have nothing left, but that's better than not being able to pay my bills at all. Like I felt like that was, that's what life was all about. And um, my husband and I got married and we did the things that one does when you get married. And four days later, I got pregnant and I had my son. And that was a shocker. That was a shocker because I never wanted to be a mom. I grew up with no parents, really. I mean, my grandparents raised me, but when you, you, no one can replace your parents. And then also that, like, why didn't they like me? Or, you know, like, you have all those questions. It's like a real thing. So when I got pregnant, I was like, I don't care. Like, I've been, oh, you went, bit, 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 bit. That was me. I'm like, I don't care. I was telling my clients, girls, don't worry. I'm going to be here two weeks after I have that baby. I'll be doing here. This is my dream. Don't even worry. And that's what I thought was going to happen. And so, as soon as I got pregnant, um, whoa, my life was a little, a little crazy. My husband lost his job. We lost our insurance. I started having problems with our pregnancy that landed me in the, um, like, the, the special doctor where you're getting, you know, the special um, ultrasounds every two weeks. Um, I thought I was going to have my son at 24 weeks. They were prepping me for that. And it was just really scary. Um, we ended up moving two times before he was even born. And... It was hard. It was it was really really hard. It was very very scary, and it was really hard on my marriage that I never even thought I was. I never even thought I was going to get married. And I was like, here we go. It's the ending of the end. We're fighting about money. I'm ready to be single. Like this is what I grew up with. So, 
Um, you know, I kind of spent the first year of my son's life just penny pinching. I was living the penny pinching life. I was couponing. I was making my own laundry soap. I was washing my clothes in the tub. I was, you know, hanging sheets up in my living room to, you know, like a thermal whatever that does. Some smart stuff, right? I was like trying to keep things warm. Well, came home and our, at like four o'clock in the morning from working, he's three side, one of his three side jobs, and he's like, it is 36 degrees in the kitchen. I'm like, it ain't frozen yet. It's fine. Everything's fine. We were doing everything that we could do. And I kind of just was like, okay, sort of. I was like, okay, going to bed crying. And I was okay getting up, being afraid to check the mail. And I was okay, you know, not checking the bank account. I was okay with Will and I like fighting. I just kind of accepted that that was just life. And then my son turned a year old on August 7th. And Will and I got into a nice fight over drinks. He went with his dad and they bought pop and beer and put it on one of our credit cards. And I lost my poop. Uh, I swear a lot, guys, I swear. I keep trying to get you. Um, I lost it on my husband and I fought with him over pop on a credit card. And so I, you know, he was doing his thing and I was all, you know, bitter, whatever. And I put Levi to bed. And I did that like psycho mom thing, you know, where we like watch our kids sleep and I'll like, get up and little tiny clothes and put it on me and just let a can't believe you grew so fast. <laughs> and I literally saw my life flash before me. Well, my life and his, it was really, it was the most bizarre thing. But it was, for I think everybody, if you have not yet, close your eyes again. I like, I like a non judgmental space. I will be the only one judging. Okay. <laughs> If you, if you believe in God, or you like, you you are like Jesus is my homie. If you're all like on Rachel's, you know, level, <laughs> God, raise your hand. Okay, and if you are not, raise your hand. You can be honest. There's more. I'm raising higher. Okay, I'm gonna tell you guys something. That was me. So I'm a girl, home girl again. Okay, I had zero faith. I didn't know. I remember going to after. I think I was in Basker. I remember going to. I think it was a conference and Tiffany Her was there and we were like having this conversation and she was just very passionately talking about God as a matter of fact and I was like, I mean, I don't know, I don't really like believe in that. She's like, I just don't, I just don't understand why you think you're having all this success. Where does the success come from? If it wasn't God, I mean, I just, and I will never forget that. I'll never forget that because I was like, she's, she's really stupid. Like, hello, I put the work in, like not some. If you guys haven't gotten your tickets for conference, go. And if you go to anything, I'm going to tell you, skip the whole damn conference and go to worship service. Yeah. Because that changed my life. I saw the people doing the this and doing the that. And I'm like, what are they raising the roof for? Like, what is happening? But I'm telling you what. They were talking about all sorts of stuff. And I didn't. I don't even know what it was like festering. Okay, But anyways, back to Levi turning one. So as I'm watching Levi sleep, and I was putting his set like a psychotic, you know, mother I was and had his little outfit on my stomach. I thought like, this is, I'm not okay anymore. He's one. I like determined, you know, when I was like 13, I wasn't gonna live this life. Like, if I don't do something, this kid is gonna be having his friends pay for his lunch. If I don't do something about this, that's what I did. This kid's not gonna be able to get his freaking license until he's 18 and his mom's out of town. Like, I had to. This kid's going to have to borrow clothes from his friends. Like, I had to. This kid's going to have to be raised by someone else because I'm going to have to work every single freaking day and never see him. Like, I had to. And it was like seeing his life and my life, and it was terrible. And that was the first time. I was like, uh, hey, guys, Jade. I don't know if they're real or anything, but I'm praying. And I had my come to Jesus moment. I'll tell you, the first time I ever prayed, my whole freaking life changed. And I didn't even know what was going to happen, but three weeks later, on a mom group, this girl messaged me, and she's like, hey, I saw you with a friend complaining about not having money, and um, I have this thing called It Works, and we sell wraps on Groupon, and I'm like, oh, God, I can sell, we don't do that, just, by the way, <laughs> like, I can sell wraps on Groupon, sure, and, and I got started, and she, she said the wrong thing, but to the right person, at the right time, 
And so for all of you guys that are, raise your hand if you're like, I'm so scared, I'm not perfect, I'm, I don't have the right messages. This lady was telling me, was selling elephants, zoos, and stuff, like she was telling me all sorts of stuff. Hello? And on top of that, I never heard from her again. I am old. And I didn't hear, I haven't heard from that lady since two weeks into my business. And I'm still in there, what, you know, whatever that says. Riddle me that. Okay, so. That means you can still be successful. So I got started in this business. I stole from T-Mobile. Their service sucks anyways. You don't have it out here because you don't have service. No. And I took from T-Mobile. I didn't pay my bill. I got started. My goal was 200 bucks. I made my $200 in my first, well, like technically like a week, sort of. Um, and my paychecks doubled every single month. I went diamond in five months. The next month, my husband went diamond. I went double diamond. The next month, he went double diamond. Whoa. I kind of questioned my life and my sanity, and I bought a house, and I paid off tons of debt, and I, I felt so unworthy of, like, everything. And then I just, then I saw this girl on, like, Facebook. She was a triple, and she was like, my husband's home. And I was like, damn, yeah, like, my husband's going to be home, too. Like, I want my husband home. I want, I, like, my son was running to the end of the driveway screaming for his daddy when Will left to go to his job. And then I realized how selfish I was. I was so focused on me being a stay-at-home mom. Why didn't I think my husband would want to be with his kids too? So then I went triple and I went presidential in November of 2014. Went to conference, brought my husband with. He was like, I'm going to quit my job. I'm going to like do that thing. I'm going to do this with you or whatever that means. Like, okay. And then I went ambassador. And then I, you know, in like a year and a half. So that's kind of my story for today. So we heard people today, I mean, I got tips on how to live my life better, and I'm not even a distributor, just from the people that were here, and we heard their non-negotiables. So she now has, how old's Levi? Is he six-ish? Yeah. So six, Lennox is two-ish, almost She'll three. Be She'll, be She'll be two. She'll be two. And she's pregnant, in case you can't tell. So as a busy mom of 2.5, what are your non-negotiables in your life? Like, what what can you tell them they must do? Well, okay, sorry, it's just okay. <laughs> Back it up there. Okay. Well, and I actually, what I want to do is, I actually get this. I don't even know what, what it's looking like. I have a message. I I kind of want to just dive right into this my letter saying this because I get hundreds of messages every single day of people thanking me or just saying I'm an inspiration. Thank you so much if you accept me that I haven't responded. I'm very sorry. But I also get really negative messages. And this is kind of where I want to just like, we're just going to like hit the road jack. And I want to tell you something. If you get your panties in a bunch over something that I say, that is your problem, not mine, because I'm only speaking the truth. I've been doing this for over five years. I've been through every single up and down that I could possibly think of so far. And you have not been there yet, because you have not done what I've done, nor done this for five years and done what I've done. So that means you need to learn. Learn from the mistakes that I've made and don't make them. That is my number one goal as a leader is to teach my team to do what I have done, but do it faster, stronger, better, and with less mistakes. Okay, so this girl messaged me and she said, Jade, I don't know how much more I can take. Haley texted me last week and said she was quitting. Jennifer texted me today and said it's too much on her marriage and she's, and she's quitting. I just feel stuck. I feel like I need to keep pushing and try to hold my head above water and keep my faith because I know everyone's journey is different, but I feel like I'm drowning. I feel like I'm overwhelmed. I don't understand why this isn't working for me. I'm working what I can because of everything going on with family, and I still feel lost, and I don't have anybody. So raise your hand if you felt kind of that before, if not now. We all have felt that way, okay? I want to tell you guys something. Something that I've really, for, that I, I've had such an amazing journey over the last five years. When I went ambassador, and I, I was in the, a top 10 income earner since a year and a half into my business, and it was just this, like, amazing thing, and I felt like, all the crap that I've ever been through in my whole entire life, from the time I was born until I hit ambassador, I felt like I had faced the fire, faced my fears, and all this stuff, and I felt like that was it for the learning for me. Um, I wasn't gonna have to get uncomfortable anymore. I wasn't gonna have to be willing to do anything else anymore. I just thought I wasn't gonna have to be willing to do whatever it took anymore. 
Um, but when I first got started, I was always willing to do what it takes because I treated this business like life or death. Like the house was on fire, mom is gonna come in there and do what I need to do and like save people. Like just, if you're not a mom yet, when you do become a mom, you are like this scary, fierce, <laughs> passionate, yeah. psycho, mess with my kid, I will beat the ever living pus out of you. Like person, you are just like fierce. Afraid of no things, no bear will come in between me and my children. And that's how I was. Um, and then I went ambassador. Kind of like Tiffany said, it's such a very good perspective, you guys. You think it's hard to dream about like imagining making $30,000? Think about getting there and being like, what's next? Who dreams about having a, a jet or whatever people at that point do? It's big. What do you dream for? What? what do I dream for now? I don't know. Do I own Disney? Like, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? That's so funny. I reached all of these levels. Top 10 in murder, retired my husband. We're going on vacations, living this amazing life. And I completely lost myself. And all of a sudden, the things that never used to bother me started bothering me. Everybody knew me as Jay doesn't care, her PJs, kids running around half naked in her video, she's doing her thing, being herself. And all of a sudden, I started caring about what everybody thought about me. I started, it was bad, it was like really bad. It was so bad that there was people messaging me. They're like, Jane, you're not making your videos anymore. I'm like, yeah, because I'm scared. <laughs> I'm afraid of everything. I'm afraid of what people are gonna say about me. I just, it was this whole crazy thing. Um, we bought a house that we live in now. Don't try to find me six minutes down the road. And our house that we moved into that I, I prayed for, it felt so good. We moved into this house and seven days later had water in our basement and we had mold. Next thing you know, I'm in a two-year lawsuit that cost $80,000, and we lost. Oh. I had a miscarriage. And then I got pregnant again. I don't want to tell you guys, if you guys ever watched one of my videos and I had only one child, and I was like, fine, time to work this business. If you want it, you will have it. When I had my second child, I ate crow. So you got, like, your wish. <laughs> it is a whole other level, adding another child into the world, and that child eats rocks. And dirt and trees and catheter and all sorts of things. So I mean my words, okay? So I've had all of these crazy things along the way. I lost myself. I felt like I wish I wish I could be Jay back in 2014 when all things were good. I was from Ruby in January to presidential in November. Whoa. And just like I wanted that back. And I had to like dig deep into my faith. So again, get your butt to conference and just skip conference. Go to worship service. Okay? Because you will find yourself at worship service. Conference is just the sugar on top, okay? But I'm telling you, I heard like a crazy person. God say, like, now I'm gonna teach you what faith is. Welcome to life. I'm gonna teach you what faith is. Okay? And so I had all this crazy stuff. My marriage was in shambles. It was because I worked my business 18 hours a day, and I probably would have picked my business over my husband. I would have. I mean, if you would have asked him, he probably would have said that too. I was so focused on just like this survival crazy like success. I wasn't a terrible person, like my gosh, but I was just so focused on like goals and all these things that I like lost the whole reason why I got started to begin with and I just lost everything. And so the pressure was heavy and I felt like a failure. I hadn't enrolled someone who took off in years and like I have amazing human beings on my team. Like they're um, like the most amazing team ever. And so I knew that I could like bring in people like that, but I couldn't understand why it wasn't happening. And so I had another come to Jesus moment where I was like, people tell you to lay it down. So I'm gonna lay it down when I'm on the ground and put my hands up and listen to some song that means a lot to me. Cause I don't know how else to give it to you, but I'm gonna give it to you. <laughs> Two months later, I got pregnant. I lost my lawsuit and I was like, God, this isn't funny. <laughs> like what is I thought it was going to start raining roses and puppy dogs and stuff, and it's raining missing lawsuits and babies. Like, this is great. But I'm going to tell you something. It has been, like, in the last, and this was just recently, holy moly, girlfriend is found herself. Like, it, oh, my God. Okay, so it's so crazy because I finally realized, why was I enrolling people that kind of, like, weren't great? Because I wasn't good. Like, I was not okay. And when you guys are walking around, how many of you guys have been like, why does everybody I enroll suck? My team doesn't want to work. Quitting. They just suck. You want to know why? Because you suck. Because you suck. You're walking around planting seeds. Listen, you're walking around planting seeds of the mere image.
image of who you are. Yeah. And your team is saying the same fears that you're saying. Your team is saying the same, the same things that you're saying in your head. They're quitting because you're sitting there in the back of your head like this girl saying, I don't know how much more I can take. Mm -hmm. We're getting this business from your damn phone. Ain't no one coming to kill you. You're not doing it for burning houses. Get it together. <laughs> Dang. Are you like, you know, like are you facing like near death experiences from your couch while you're watching keeping up with Kardashians and messaging people? No, not at all. So I realized, you know what? Who was that? Like, besides the fact that I like felt on fire, what made me feel on fire? Because when I got started, I was willing to do whatever it took. You guys, I made like a crap ton of money with this business, and I got to a place where I was a brat. I didn't, I wasn't willing to do what it took anymore. I was not humble, and I don't mean like I wasn't nice. I wasn't real nice, but I wasn't humble, like in the sense that I just thought, well, if they don't enroll, they're not like how I was. I just figured it out. Tiffany Hurst, she just figured it out. She figured it out more than I did. I was sitting here busting balls for seven months, and Tiffany Hurst like, I got the Tiffany Hurst, and I went triple. And I'm like, you just enrolled five minutes ago. <laughs> okay, thank you, Tiffany Hurst. And I'm like, sitting trying to go double, like, you know? So you are planting your images of who you are. So if you want better plants, if you want better seeds, stop trying to enroll runners. Ain't no freaking person in this business a runner. Nobody comes out, I, I, I have over 70,000 people on my team, and the only people who came into this business a runner was two, two of them, 70,000, two of them, and I was not one of them. <laughs> you want people who are willing to do whatever it takes. You want to be willing to do whatever it takes. You gotta stay up late, suck it up. Be willing to do whatever it takes. If you have to learn new things, if your pictures suck, go freaking on YouTube and figure out how to make dang nice pictures, okay? If you don't know how to talk to people, figure it out. Start asking. Be willing to do whatever it takes. Be willing to learn. This is an industry. Become a student of network marketing. Okay? This is a real job. I went to cosmetology school to learn how to do hair. Learn how to be a good network marketer. There's tons of books. There's leaders teaching you how to do it for free. I was willing to do whatever it took. I was excited. I became so excited again. And I'm telling you, when I had kids and had miscarriages and family members who had cancer and then had cancer again and a stinking lawsuit and all this stuff, I became humble because I became grounded again. And I, for the first time, became understanding. If someone would have come to me and been like, oh, my husband wants to leave me. Well, let him leave. Let's work your business and make tons of money. It don't matter. But then I realized that it's so important to have that partner in your life, that we're meant to have a partner. And I don't care if it's man, woman, you know, like man, woman, I don't care what you're doing. I still love you, so you do your thing. So don't try to think that I said that. But we need a partner in life. We need someone to love. And that was really hard for me, too, accepting that my husband really did like me, especially for how I grew up. He's like, you really like me, don't you? You put up with me a lot, thank you. You know? Um, I had to, you know, be excited, be willing to do whatever it took. And I had to find that fire. You guys, you have, who's nervous? Every day, like, you're just like, so nervous! It is your choice to turn your nervousness into fear or excitement. Your choice. Nervousness is the feeling. You are all like, oh my god, I just have so much anxiety and I'm so discouraged and all of these things. That was your choice. I have the same feelings. I'm excited. I still to this day message people. I've messaged like 5 million people, I think. I'm still messaging them over and over again. And every single time I see like my thing blinking and it's telling me they responded, I poke my butt a little bit and I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm going to read what they say to me. Okay? There's a reason why my blacklist is at 1,600. Because if you're not, if you're not nice, they'll block you. I don't care. You just disappear right off the world. I don't care. But you guys, there's nothing to fear. That's your choice. Okay? So there was this thing I found and I printed it out and put it on my wall. Because when I do things and put them on my wall, they like come true. It's like my little, it's my little secret. Where's it at? Where'd it go? Okay. Fear tells you that you are incapable, that you're too late, and you must be perfect. That those are things that I did fear. I was afraid of people, what they were saying about me. I was afraid that I didn't look like Alyssa Bilyeu. I was no longer 23. I had a mom body. I had gotten to the biggest that I've ever gotten. I felt just not okay. My boobs hang low from breastfeeding for 500 years. Um, like, I just felt, I just didn't have it anymore. And I was comparing myself to everybody else. 
But faith tells you, or excitement for everybody who hasn't come, you know, hasn't had their come to Jesus moment yet, you'll come there, I'm telling you, it's going to change your life. But what faith or excitement or what good, good vibes tells you is that you're more than a conqueror, okay? That God's timing is perfect and that progress is better than perfection. And that's a huge thing. I had to tell myself, you know what? I'm not going to be perfect, but I am going to be perfect Jade. And that every single one of us has this, like, gift, this thing that we're just so good at. And normally it's the stuff that we used to get in trouble for in school. When they're like, shut up, put your head down, and do your test. <laughs> well, it was actually me not shutting up was the thing that, like, totally changed my life. You know, it's your voice, it's your creativity, it's all these things. So when people ask me what I do day to day, I just, like, I just, I'm just me. I'm in the PJs. My husband's clothes right now because none of my clothes fit me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Will, for letting me wear all your clothes. Um, my house is a mess. My living room is full of ketchup, which is why Aspen's not invited to my house after this. I have two dogs. There's always dog footprints and mud everywhere. Um, my children are clean and fed, though. <laughs> I was very unorganized, and I realized that um, to be a mother of three children, I don't know how you do it with like 500. But to be a mother of three children, I needed to get organized, so I have a schedule. I order my groceries. Thank you, Shift. Did you have them? I'm like, hey, amen. I don't grocery shop anymore. I just became willing, and I became excited again. And I, for a long time, I was afraid of being excited, and I was afraid of having faith, and I was afraid of expecting good things because I just felt. Have you guys ever been afraid of, like, you feel like if you expect good things to come, that you're just gonna be really disappointed. I don't know how else to explain that. It's like the worst feeling ever. I became, like, you know, it doesn't matter, come hell or high water, like, I was gonna make this work, and I was gonna be better. I know you guys are probably like, what, what else do you wanna do, other than the things that you've done, but I'm not done yet, you know? I've got 70,000 people on my team, so like, I set the par, I set the bar for what they're, they're able to do, you know? And if that means that I have to, you know, sail new waters, I'm gonna sail new waters, because I'm not done. I still gotta go number one, I'm working on it. Still gotta go left diamond, triple left diamond, whatever happens. Um, <laughs> like I, still, I still have to be there for them. So my life is crazy. I'm a nook and crannies kind of girl. I don't have time to sit here on my butt. I got dogs humping each other, kids <laughs> eating cat poop and stuff. Like I'm telling you, it's nuts. But I work with the nooks and crannies in my day. That is very, very true. That's what I tell my, my team. I tell my new people. I'm passionate about that. I'm understanding it. Life is crazy. My husband annoys the crap out of me. So he's outside. Working on outside man things. And doing man, the man things that I don't want to do. Okay? That's what he's doing. He's super happy. I'm super happy. And we have date nights. And I dedicate my time to him. Because he's got to deal with me when I'm old. And I'm thankful for that. Okay? Because he's great. Hello, Will, if anybody's live right now. And that's not why I'm saying it. But anyways, and my life is crazy, and I'm always willing to grow and change. And I have nights when I go to bed, and I'm like, I'm like, this sucks. But then tomorrow I wake up and I make the decision that I'm going to own the day and stop letting my life own me. So that is all I have to 